the sympathetic thing, whether it be from a restorative dentist standpoint, a TMD dentist, an endodontist, an oral surgeon, a periodontist, uh, a neurologist, a chiropractor, I think all these people should know this stuff, the very basics of it at least. Well, yeah, and it starts with history. And the history is basically, you, you have a very commonly performed procedure. And the end result of that procedure is pain out of proportion yeah. to what you would typically expect. Okay. Right. Now we've made dry socket a pain that we can expect, but it's out of proportion to the actual procedure and healing from the procedure. That okay. should, a light should go off when that happens. Sure, and you see it all the time. I mean, you, you might see it after, after minor surgery in the mouth. You might see it after a dental procedure. I've seen it after equilibration. And it's mysterious pain. It's almost unbelievable pain because the patient says, this hurt extremely badly right. following this particular procedure. And the patient focuses on the procedure. Sure. Okay. The patient focuses on that mechanical change that they went through. And the concept of having the patient own the problem is that the patient won't own the pain. Yeah. They own having gone through the procedure, they'll let you reverse the procedure. But until they own the pain, very oftentimes they can't get well because they keep blaming somebody else on the pain. Yeah. Okay, and and that's a, th that is how I have found I've been able to break down the barriers of getting people better. It's kind of like um, you know there there are excellent studies whether it's back injury or or any other of numerous types of pain problems. If there is um, litigation, by definition, the plaintiff owns the pain of the defendant. I mean, the other way around. Right. The defendant the owns the pain of the plaintiff. And you have this adversarial uh, process through the courts. And what studies show is that while patients are actively in litigation, they don't get better. Okay. And again, they're making the other person on their pain. And I've extrapolated that to the medical side of things to say, okay, uh, the reality is you had a root canal and you have pain that we understand. You, sure. have, you have complex regional pain syndrome, we understand that. Uh, but you have to own the problem. What we own as practitioners or what we really want to do for the patient is to try to make a, a reasonable diagnosis and then matching that diagnosis with reasonable treatment to try to make them better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, somebody has cancer and you know your tools to treat that cancer. Uh, the treating doctor can't own the cancer. They, they can say, here is my expertise right. and my guidance on maximizing your outcome from from your cancer from your problem and it really is the same thing in the pain world so sometimes you'll see people who really are are focused on the event focused on a person focused on a on a trauma or something like that and and that's the cause and that's that's what changed their pathway in life yeah but now they have that problem and they own that problem, and, and we're here to help them with that problem and help them get better. It's just a more reasonable pathway to getting people to that end point of saying, uh, thank you, I, I have improvement, I can see and understand yep. what you're talking about in terms of layers and understand what you're saying in terms of trying to break it down into its components now and treating it, yep. okay? So back to bites. Cold sensitivity is an allodynia, right. and very often times that cold sensitivity is increased friction on teeth. It's increased time that the teeth are in contact. Uh, you and I have talked about how 
as you change the anatomy in the joint foundation, people spend more time on their back teeth, mm -hmm. okay? As, as you dislocate a disc, people spend more time on their back teeth. And possibly yeah. less time on their discs. And less time on their disc. The, the slide from Cetric, you know, the, the bump and slide that yeah. people have very much relates to the amount of damage in the TMJ as well. Uh, but again, that's important. That CRCO slide that we're all looking for, that's that's huge part of what, what I do when I'm examining somebody. So you could look at it like in our traditional model, we would say, well, it's the tooth. It's the tooth anatomy. Mm -hmm. And we have to modify the tooth anatomy so they don't have this slide because when we eliminate that slide in the tooth anatomy, the patient now has less muscle spasm, okay? Traditional pathway. Right. The alternative pathway would be, okay, they have more time on those teeth. What's causing that? Right. And oftentimes it's mechanical injury here that's changing dimension in the joint, changing dimension in the bite. They spend more time on their teeth. Now, what is the pathway to the spasm? Why do they have the spasm? There's the key. Okay. Yeah. Well, in our traditional model, it's all in the trigeminal nerve. And the malocclusion fires the muscles of mastication. Okay. But if it's trigeminal firing muscles of mastication, why do, their, why do they hurt in their trapezius muscle too? Right. Why do they have pain going down their arm? And the answer is there's another explanation for the spasm. The, uh, the alternative explanation is that there is dystonia, abnormal muscle tone relating to the sympathetic nerves. Right. Okay? So if you block the sympathetics, if you eliminate uh, what's stimulating them, now you can see more generalized muscle spasm come down as well. And that's why uh, doing the greater auricular block Okay, you're blocking uh, C1 through C3 right. with a few sympathetic nerves along with it. You're not blocking trigeminal nerve, but they get better here. Their, mm. their spasm goes down and their sensitivity goes down. And that is a sympathetic nerve response. Yeah. Okay. You want to hear something interesting? Years ago, before I knew about this, back when I was doing DTR, Disclusion Time Reduction Therapy, just adjusting bites with the computers, the T-scan, the EMG, Nowadays, we call it measured anterior guidance development, meaning we've actually tied in what the joints are doing to the timing of the bite. It's not just tooth-based. We're looking at joint, joint, teeth. Mm -hmm. So MAGD, the distinction between DTR. But my point, back in the day when I was doing DTR alone, was oblivious to what was going on with the joint. Interestingly, oftentimes, and I see it to this day when I make those adjustments on certain patients, their neck starts relaxing. Their facial muscles, they start melting. They start nodding off in the chair. Their tooth sensitivity starts abating. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that wrote about that. I'm the guy that saw that in practice. And I can tell you to this day, I still see it. And the interesting part is, I can't, I can't justify doing a great auricular nerve block on every patient before I do the bite adjustment. I'm not gonna spend their money that way. But if there was some kind of controlled study out there that could be done, I bet you money that if day before you were to block this, you'd find that this would go away, resolve at least partly. But my point is, how interesting is it that I will see those changes after a very precise occlusal adjustment procedure? And it's only out of MIP and its excursive movements. I shouldn't say only. And the right patient, it's out of MIP, and I'm dealing with excursive movements. So I think that's really huge because why would one's neck become relaxed when I'm working on something that's supposed to be trigeminally based only? The reality is, I believe, I know it has to be, there's not just trigeminal inputs, there's also sympathetic wrapped in. Just as you say, the sympathetics follow the vasculature coming up into the head and neck. And it makes perfect sense. And it, everything I've seen over the years is such that that has to be the answer. And there might be a third or a fourth layer that neither of us are really aware of. I don't know. I, I don't know. 
Well, I think I, <clears throat> I think the issue is that if a if a general dentist sees pain out of proportion to what they did, sure, uh, there may be a reasonable explanation if you explore sympathetic nerves. Yeah, exploring sympathetic nerves is not that difficult. We give third division trigeminal blocks all the time. Okay, to the various branches. Uh, this is simply going to the neck and simultaneously making a sympathetic block. Now back to my surgery world. When I do TMJ surgery, I block both sets of nerves. Yeah. So I do block the auriculotemporal nerve in the joint, at the joint, before I make a skin incision. Mm -hmm. I also block the greater auricular nerve. Okay, and that is just routine coming out of surgery. They've got both nerve blocks blocked, yeah. and you're you're really taking three layers of pain, knocking them down simultaneously. All three layers go to the head. Trigeminal is already there, right? Cervical sensory fibers follow the greater occipital nerve. They follow the cervical plexus, superficial cervical plexus. So you're blocking those, okay, part of them yeah. around the jaw, and then you're blocking sympathetics. So, you know, that's a very, very routine thing. Another very routine thing, um, when we put people to sleep with facial crypts, we do a stellate ganglion block. We haven't gotten into that anatomy, but the, the sympathetic trunks are parallel to the spinal cord. They're extra spinal, but parallel. And uh, sympathetic nerves come out of the upper thoracic spine mm -hmm. and they travel up and form ganglia in the neck. The most inferior ganglion is the stellate or third, third cervical ganglion. And we block that. When you block that, you're blocking all the sympathetic tone uh, going more superior from there. And ultimately, you're also, by default, blocking superior cervical ganglion, which is going to send out the sympathetic nerves along the vessels and along the, the sensory nerves that go into the face. So that is an important block to do, in my opinion, if you have a patient with a lot of pain. Uh, that patient with a baseline of very high pain, if you start with a stellate block, to supplement the sensory blocks that you do for your surgery, mm -hmm. um, it can it can help begin to wind that more general general pain down in the patient.